Welcome back. I'm now going to talk about ways of publishing and consuming RDF data and uh, particular how you can use triple stores, what triple stores are and how to access them uh, using Sparkle queries. So up to now or up to last week, we had a pretty abstract view on RDF. So a knowledge graph was a set of triples as one P01, O1, S2, P2, O2. And that was how we defined an RDF knowledge graph. Um, then we defined how you get notions of entailment based on these knowledge graphs. Um, so all the statements that are basically true with respect to the model information. And finally, we learned that there is a language, Sparkle, so that you can ask queries against RDF in a database, also called a Sparkle endpoint or a triple store. What you will notice in this story from last week is that there is a pretty big gap between the very abstract representation of uh, RDF we chose and the practical question of uh, wh where is the data and what to do with the data and so forth. And uh, this, is gap, this gap is what I'm going to try to, to close a little bit in this uh, short presentation. So basically, there, there are many different ways of uh, working with structured RDF data on the web. And um, so in the end, we all want to publish it as some kind of linked data on the web. And um, we can do this via uh, producing RDF files that we publish on RDF, uh, as RDF uh, on web servers ourselves. Um, we can do this uh, from structured data or produce it ourselves or also from text, but that's a bit outside the scope of this um, presentation and this course as well. We can also use structured data sources to automatically build RDF stores and then publish those RDF stores as linked data. Um, there are other ways, namely we can have uh, access to relational databases with some kind of wrappers or produce uh, with a constant, constant, con, content management system. We can produce some HTML pages with uh, the, including some RDF information with, with the RDFA format. And then we can have, a, if we have an API, we can also write wrappers to produce linked data and publish linked data automatically. In this course, we focus on this right-hand side where you publish RDF files directly so that people can load it into their own uh, programs and parse it and work with this, or where you publish RDF uh, data in a triple store or an RDF database. So these are the two options that we are going to discuss now. So if you want to publish data, you can uh, uh, in your program, like you did last week, uh, add RDF manually. So you write down add SPO to your graph, and then you can work with this. An alternative is that you load an RDF file from your, from your own file system into your, uh, into your program. And then it's parsed and serialized and so forth. And you can do the same, of course, with programs that you downloaded from a web server somewhere. And we have a program at the VU that uh, one of our PhD students and our colleagues developed, the Lot Laundromat, and it has crawled more than 600,000 documents of this kind. So really RDF files in turtle or whatever. As I said on the previous slide, many content management systems add some small uh, snippets of RDF, usually called RDFA or microdata to their, the HTML, HTML pages that they produce. And there are also some other APIs with lesser expressivity than Sparkle, but we will ignore them for now. We will look at the second big way of publishing RDF data, and that is to use an HTTP API on a database. And that's usually called a Sparkle endpoint or a triple store. So first option is that we really have literally turtle files somewhere for other people to download. And the second thing is that we have a database running to which people can actually write expressive queries and get the results back via HTTP. So here are the two options, the file publishing and the triple store publishing, and you will do both. So when we now have published data, we also want to access it. And um, you have done in module two, you have already done part of this, namely you load files directly in your program into your 
uh, Python program. And these documents, these turtle files, they are loaded in RDF into appropriate data structures. In RDF lib, this is called a graph. And then you can manipulate the data in this graph uh, data structure in an efficient and effective way. Um, basically, then you, you ac access the data structures in a programmatic way. Um, you can also access the data structure via Sparkle, who's also a task in this uh, module, uh, or in this one, I think it is in the third one. Um, so this is the sort of uh, structured way you can use either uh, operators from your library to manipulate the graph structure, uh, the data structure describing your graph, or you use Sparkle to get information out of your data structure. You can also do really manual efforts. You can add data to your program. For example, the, the g.add function, which just adds a triple. Um, and you can then access the data structure programmatically. So you serialize it and you print things out. So this is really the sort of hand work uh, with uh, the data that has been parsed into a data structure of uh, your programming library. The um, alternative is to use a triple store. And um, the triple store is a database that has been built on purpose to be able to efficient to be efficient when dealing with graph data, with label graph data, and with RDF data in particular. So, on the one hand, you can run your local triple store, and what you have to do is you load your file into the local triple store, and then you can access this via Sparkle. And you can do that either within your programming environment, as we did, uh, we, I showed on the previous slide, or you do it via HTTP, which I'm going to show now, sooner, uh, later. You can also load information from an external triple store into your program, as you did with ge.load. Uh, and then you give the information uh, a resource, a URI, and this triple store in Hanover, wherever it is, returns graph data about this resource. It's called dereferencing. So HTTP DDBpedia.org resource Amsterdam. If you ask this as a query to this endpoint of DBpedia, it gives you back all the information about Amsterdam. You can also do something similar by using a Sparkle wrapper directly within your program. So this is a code example. So you first take the RDF lib library, and then you take this special Sparkle wrapper library, and then you can define sort of the address where, where you ask your query against. You can define your query, so select every, the label of everything that um, has, is the label of a resource Asturias and is uh, uh, related by a label relation. And then you have to set the, the, the result, what kind of format you get back so that you can actually parse the result. And here you get JSON back uh, with, which to, with, with, with which you can then work later. There's an example in the assignment three, which is done exactly in this way. So basically what you do here is in your Python program, you define a Sparkle query that allows you to expressively query at an endpoint, namely this one in Hanover, and it returns data that you can then use in your Python program again to manipulate it. For example, to build a, an, a nice graph you can visualize or later to build a web application. So I've mentioned the word triple store a number of times. So let me quickly give you an overview. I don't want to go into depth, but a quick overview of what this is in the first place. It's a purpose-built graph database to deal specifically with IDF data. So um, it's, it's made very efficient for dealing with prefixes and so forth along your eyes. The data can be stored persistently on disk, which is scalable, or in memory, which is a bit faster. And then it is optimized for fast querying because of uh, the use of dictionary indices and statistics. Let me explain all of these terms. So a um, dictionary is uh, something where you have a, if you have a database with long names, you just write down uh, abbreviations for those uh, long names, identifiers, 
and then you build a table that only contains these identifiers. So instead of saying object 214 several times, I have one dictionary entrance that says I have an identifier 0 for object 214, and then my table with SPOs in it becomes 0, um, 1, 2 instead of object has color blue. And that obviously makes my tables far more, uh, far smaller. The second thing is, uh, so the dictionary means replacing names by addresses. The second thing is that data is indexed for fast access. So uh, instead of having, if you have a table with uh, three triples, S1, P1, O1, the second triple is S1, P2, O2, and the third one is S2, P2, O1, then we can write an index in which to find the specific subject. So we would now write that in the subject table that S1 would be findable in T1, in the first triple, and in the second triple, and S2 would be findable in the third triple. And we have the same for an object. You have to do the same for properties, and then particularly important, you also do this for combinations. So you would have an, an S1, P1, and you give all the objects, all the tables in which uh, S1, P1 start the triples, and in some tables, or they are more efficient ways of, of implementing this, you would even not store the link to the tables, but you would store the link to the object that are in this S1, P1 relation. So basically, instead of storing the triples as is, you store the relations between the objects in this triple so that you can find them efficiently. And then you get these kind of tables where you say, okay, um, I have a predicate, order by predicate has numbers, and then you get all the subjects and you get all the objects and this allows for very fast retrieval of the right triples. This is now ordered by, by predicate but you can also order by subject and then uh, depending on the query that you want to ask you find them very efficiently in these tables. And obviously here we use the, the full names again in the indices but if you do this properly you would replace these long names with the um, the, the abbreviations, the addresses that you have from your uh, dictionary. This is just to give you an idea of how uh, this is done internally within such a triple store and why this is then faster uh, than if you just build your own data structure in a program so that if you have large numbers of data items that you can really be very efficient on them. The second thing that is very important is the uh, optimization for fast querying based on the optimization of joins. So joins is if you have uh, combinations of different results from partial queries, and you have that a lot in, in graph queries. So if you have, for example, the question uh, X is a woman and X is a professor, then what you normally would have to do is that you look, get the list of all the women, and then you have to check whether um, who, of, who of these women is a professor. And obviously if you have a huge database then you will get enormous amount of women and you will have to check for all these women whether they are professors. And um, so, so then the, the point is that it's um, important to order your searches. Uh, so and the question is what is faster? Retrieve all the women and check whether they are professors or retrieve all the professors and check whether they are female. So uh, let's have a quick uh, uh, moment to think about this. Of course the answer is that you retrieve all professors first and check whether they are female because there are far fewer professors so you only have to, to check all the professors whether they are female or not. If you check all the women check whether they are professors then you have to search far more often. So in a join optimization what you do is that you do take statistics of how many uh, women are out there, how many professors are there, and when you have to decide on which query to evaluate first, then you just look up which one has the fewest results. And this is something that is done uh, uh, at uh, indexing time, so this is done once and for all in a database so that you answer these queries that have joins uh, very efficiently. You'll probably see this later in courses on databases, so this is not not something specific for uh, graph databases, this is um, uh, for, for, for any kind of databases where you have complex queries with joins, these kind of query plans are really essential to make them scalable. So 
this was a, the, the three things you need to know about a graph database. And in principle, the only thing you need to, to know practically is that you can upload data sets to it and that you can ask queries uh, against them in the very rich Sparkle query language. So how does it relate to your practical assignment? The first thing you will have to do is to install Stardog, which is your own database system. So from today, tomorrow, whenever you start, whenever you're done, you will be uh, your own database uh, uh, owner and uh, administrator, and uh, that's uh, quite nice. It's not trivial because uh, you need to set paths. If you use Windows, it's, uh, it can be rather painful, but it's doable. So I managed, so I'm sure you will. And if you have questions, just, just ask them on Piazza and we'll sort it out. Um, the next thing is that you start your database server because this database is just a program that doesn't do anything un until you start it up so that it now becomes a server that listens at a certain point of your computer, at, at a certain uh, port of your computer. Uh, in this, the standard is uh, 5A20. It's listening there for contact from outside. Um, and this is where we have to start our little exercise. So you take, uh, I'll show you now how this works. You open in your um, uh, browser, you'll, you'll open this, but first you will have to start the database. So this is the, in the command line, you just type the command that is given in the, uh, in, in the command, in, in, the, in the tools section that we already provided. You start it up. It takes a while before before all the data is loaded into the database, but then you will see that there, there, there is some information given back, namely, for example, at, at which port it is going to wait. And my computer is now a bit slow, but normally that should be a bit faster. And when once it has started, you can go to this website. Here it comes. To You can go to this um, website, http slash slash localhost, and then the port number and see what your machine uh, says on this part. Basically, what it says is that, that it opens the administration page of Stardog, and um, there is probably, in this case, not yet a database. So you have to add a database. I have already done that. I've created a database tutorial. But um, you can simply do this by clicking on the database button, and then click on new database, you give it a name, say test, and then you just follow next. There are some things you can, some options that you can ask. You should enter some reasoning type. Um, you can have a uh, same as reasoning, for example. We'll explain that next week. So you can always change these options later. And then you finish and you have created a new database. Again, it might take a little bit of time. Um, so I've created a database now. And then I can query it, I can browse it, and I can see what's in there. And of course, there's nothing in it because I haven't put anything in it. So next thing I should do is that I should add some information. You search for data. I take the example from the slide and you upload it to a different database where I know that it works, worked because I did the same. So I, I uh, uploaded exactly this file. And then if you browse, you will see that there are now classes in it and objects in it uh, and properties in it that you can see here. You can also ask queries. So one query, I will just copy it from the other side because it's, uh, um, um, I have already prepared this. So you can ask this query off. So I just show what's in the table. And here you see that they are all the triples that I have added uh, in the uh, in the file just a couple of minutes ago. So basically, this is now a query interface that I use to query my own database. Now, this is the sort of internal query interface from Stardog. I can also use the YasGUI interface that you used before. And I give it the address. It's a local host uh, 5820. Um, it's the database tutorial. And then you have to add this query at the end, otherwise it won't work. And you give it the same, um, you give it the same query, and you see that there are the same results coming out. So these are now, this is now a query that has been sent to via HTTP to my local um, uh, port where 
My own local database listens to and waits for this query to come and it answers with these uh, triples go, giving them back. And they look, this is how they look uh, in, in a raw format. It's, it's a, a JSON format that gets back. And it's exactly the same as going to DBpedia. So now I do exactly the same. It's the same query, just a different endpoint. I get 10 results and these are now results that have been sent from Hanover because they're the databases. So we do exactly the same thing. Once the data comes from our own hard drive uh, in our own database, and once it comes from a database somewhere else. So that's in principle exactly the same, twice exactly the same. So now you can integrate this data into your own program. You can do this either by um, copying the JSON that you get out of your HTTP request, or you can use a Sparkle wrapper to ask this query against either, again, the, the database in Hanover or the database on your local host 5820. Important thing that I, I mentioned very briefly is that the results that you get back from these Sparkle queries from the endpoints are not in RDF, but they are in JSON. So we need to somehow do something with these results. We need to parse them. So this is a little bit tricky later so that they come out in this very nice format. And the reason is, of course, that the results are not necessarily triples like here. So if I only search for the objects, for example, then I don't get triples back, but only one column of objects. Um, I have to call it object, object, then this is matched correctly. So now I get all the objects from the table. Um, and, and obviously this is now not valid RDF anymore. So that's why the results come back in some different format, like uh, tables or um, uh, raw response than it normally is, uh, is in this case, uh, JSON. If you... This is, I think, all from the using a Sparkle endpoint. And uh, part of the fun for the practical assignment is to install the Stardog and getting running, test out some databases that they run on the, on the system, and then ask it queries from either the SGUI interface or its own interface or from your local program in, Java, in Python. Mm -hmm.